Cross-sectional survey is one of the most common research designs. Let's take a look at an example article that applies cross-sectional survey. The example article is written by Baron and Tang. It's titled Entrepreneur Social Skills and New Venture Performance, Mediating Mechanism and Cultural Generality. The study is published in Journal of Management, which is one of the top journals in the field of management. The topic belongs to entrepreneurship, but this is a general journal, so they publish pretty much anything related to management, as long as it's of high quality. The study is a survey, and it's a cross-sectional survey. Survey study is something where you ask people to provide you data, so you, you would ask people questions either in an online form or a paper form, or you can call the people. Typically survey questions are something like, like statements where you rate them from one to five or one to seven, or they might be open questions. Surveys come in a couple different forms. Cross-sectional survey means that you do one survey and longitudinal survey means that you do multiple surveys, for example, one per year and then you link the data so that you can follow the respondents over time. Cross-sectional survey is more common because it's a lot less expensive to implement than a longitudinal survey. The paper <coughs> studies the effects of entrepreneurs' social skills, and there are various different social skills that they study. Then they hypothesize that those social skills affect the ventures, resource acquisition and information acquisition performance, and those resource acquisition and information acquisition then affect company performance or company growth, which is measured through a growth in revenue and growth in profits and growth in performance. Then um, they repeat the study in a couple of different countries to test if it generalizes across cultures. So that is the study in a nutshell. And let's take a look at how this positions within the frameworks we have covered th thus far. And this is a theory testing study. So they present theory first, and then they present the statistical test of that theory. In the paradigmatic framework, this belongs to the functionalist paradigm. So they assume that the world is real and independent of observation, instead of studying, for example, people's perceptions, which an interpretive study would do. This is a survey study, because they ask people to provide, provide data. They don't do observations like we would do field research. They don't manipulate like we would do an experiment. And they don't use data collected by somebody else that we would do in our cover research. The study is focused on causality and uh, they apply the statistical modeling strategy. Let's take a look at the study in a bit more detail now. So this is a deductive study. The idea of deductive study is that you first present a theory. We have he here. And the theory here is about specific social skills. And the social skill that they are talking about is social perception, which they define, of, uh, define as person's uh, ability to sense or perceive how others are affected in a social situation. And then they have a theory of why that might affect uh, entrepreneurs' performance. And from that theory, they derive a hypothesis. The idea is that if this theory is correct, then uh, this statistical hypothesis should hold. Entrepreneur social skills at social perception, accuracy in per perceiving others is positively related to financial performance and new ventures. So that is their hypothesis that they are using to test this theory that they present. The overall idea of the hypothetical deductive method is that you start with, with a, a theory or a theoretical hypothesis, and then you derive an observable consequence. And then we uh, say that if this theory, this um, theory and some auxiliary hypothesis, like for example, uh, our data are not biased in any way, we have valid measures of social perception and financial performance, and so on. If all these hypotheses hold, then uh, we should observe what the statistical hypothesis says. If we observe the statistical hypothesis, then, or if we don't observe the statistical hypothesis, then we conclude that the original theoretical hypothesis, this theory here is incorrect. And if we observe su support for the statistical hypothesis, we conclude that theory could be correct. We can never uh, say that the theory is proven because there are various different other reasons that might lead to a positive correlation besides this data. But we say that these data support the theory if this statistical hypothesis is supported by the data. But we can never prove it. So it, it might be uh, receive support for some other reason as well. The data come from a cross-section survey of 129 entrepreneurs in China. 
and this is postal mail, so it's paper, best survey instead of electronic. And they measure uh, these four different social skills using validated self-reported scales. That means that there, uh, there is a set of questions that together are trying to measure each of these dimensions, like social perception. They might have four different statements and then the entrepreneur rates uh, the statements between one completely disagree and seven completely agree. And then based on those uh, responses to, let's say, four questions, the uh, researcher then calculates one score for that entrepreneur that quantifies that entrepreneur's social perception skills. The dependent variables are sales growth, profit growth, and employment growth, and they just ask for numbers. And then they measure mediation models or mediating variables. The idea is that the effect of these social skills is not direct, but it goes through resource acquisition and information acquisition that are measured similarly to these uh, other, so they are rating scales between one and seven. Then they have control variables for ruling out alternate explanations. They use regression analysis and then there is additional analysis for moderation that I will not go into in detail in this talk. So our book says that the main preoccupations of quantitative researchers start with measurement and causality. Both of these aspects are present in this paper. Let's look at measurement first. So the idea of measurement is how do we precisely quantify the attributes that of interest. And I'm focusing on social perception in this talk. When you read this kind of a survey study, you typically find a rather lengthy measure section. And this measure section explains what was included in the survey form, what questions were asked in, in the paper-based survey, and how they were asked. And they say that they use this seven-point Likert type, type scale, so that's the agreement scale, one completely disagree, seven completely agree, uh, and, and so on. Importantly, you need to justify, like, where do these questions come from? And typically they come from prior research because developing good survey questions and showing that they work is, is a lot of work. And for that reason, researchers prefer to do, use existing scales. And they uh, say here that uh, the social skills were measured using, uh, by using questions taken from prior research. That's very common and that's a recommended practice. Then uh, beyond replay, uh, reporting where your questions come from, you need to demonstrate reliability and validity. And we demonstrate validity with something uh, called a factor analysis. And they explain factor analysis here. You don't have to understand the details, but this factor analysis table is typically the table one, the first table in a survey study because you first need to demonstrate validity and reliability before you can do anything else with your data. And what factor analysis does is that it groups the variables uh, into, into certain dimensions. And here factor analysis found five different dimensions in the data. And it says that these uh, social perception items strongly belong to the second dimension. So the dimension order is, is arbitrary, but they belong to the second dimension and they don't belong to any other dimension. So we can see that this, these other variables on these rows are close to zero. So we say that these uh, five variables that measure social perception only belong to this one factor. Then we look at if any other factors, uh, any other variables belong to this factor, and these values are pretty low. So we would conclude that um, these items, these questions have something in common that no other question has. And then we conclude that that something in common is that they measure the same thing. And this is interpreted as evidence of measurement validity in quantitative studies. So you look at every, every item, every question loads of just in one factor, and the factor loading should be about 0.7. This is a pretty low, pretty low but most are more than 0.7. Then we also have reliability statistics. This is coefficient alpha, sometimes called Cronbach's alpha. And it's commonly found in this table. And, and the commonly used cutoff rule of thumb is 0.7, and these are in the 0.8 ballpark. So reliability seems pretty good. So based on this table, we will conclude that these Survey questions are reliable and valid measures of whatever they are supposed to measure. 
Then they explain the measurement of the dependent variable, so growth, they're just asking growth rate, profit rate, and uh, employee growth rate using questions. So this is the measurement part, it's, it's perhaps the longest part in the method section in this kind of a survey-based paper, because justifying why the questions measure what they're supposed to measure is uh, it's quite hard. Then there's causality, and uh, causality in observation studies can be addressed by using control variables or statistical modeling. There are other strategy, strategies, but statistical modeling with controls is the most uh, simplest thing. Let's take a look at how they deal with these three conditions. The first condition is association, and let's focus on social perception. We would check association from a correlation table. So table number two is the correlation table, and you should always look at this table first when you look at the quantitative study that presents one, which is pretty much all non-experimental studies, they present this correlation table. And uh, we can see that social perception is on row number seven, and this is column number seven corresponds to that row. We can see that the dependent variable, sales growth, profit growth, is statistically significantly associated with social perception, but the employment growth is not. So we would say that uh, association is supported for these two growth variables, but not the third one. We can also look at association in the regression table, but this is a lot easier to table to interpret. Then, condition two, direction of effect. And this article actually doesn't take direction of effect into account because it's a cross-sectional study. Everything is measured at the same time point, so they can't say whether social skills become before resources or resources be, uh, become before social skills and so on, and or profits, where the, where the growth becomes before uh, resources or resources are affecting growth. And they present it as, uh, as a limitation, and, and that's, that's fair. Cross-sectional studies cannot empirically determine which of two variables is cause, which one is effect. Then condition number three, rival explanation. This is a, a pretty weak uh, handling of rival explanations, but the idea is that you, you present alternative variables whose influence you try to control. The idea might here be that, for example, smaller companies can grow more because growth is relative and if your starting point is small, then it's easy to grow than if you are a large company. Smaller companies grow faster than larger ones. And also it might be possible that entrepreneurs in smaller companies have more bare social skills. Then we would have a spurious correlation because company size affects both social skills and growth and we, we might incorrectly conclude that, that there's a causal effect if we don't control for size. So they just list the controls without justifying, which is not ideal. Then the main hypothesis testing is here, these regression tables. So they run six different regression models, and I'm just focusing on, on one, one specific path, causal pathway just for simplicity. So let's take a look at this, this causal pathway. They say that expressiveness uh, leads to resource acquisition, leads to employment growth rate. So um, how do they, they test this, this chain, this mediation, this chain of, of causality? First, they have to demonstrate that expressiveness affects employee growth rate. So we would look at, okay, so here's a model with employment growth rate as the dependent variable, and here is expressiveness affecting employment growth rate. Importantly, we don't here have the, the, moder the mediator here, resource acquisition yet, but this is just an overall effect if um, expressiveness affects growth. Then we want to know if um, expressiveness affects resource acquisition. We can look at the resource acquisition model, and we can see that expressiveness indeed has an effect. It is statistically significant. It affects resource acquisition. And then we look at whether uh, expressiveness affects uh, or, or uh, resource acquisition affects growth rate. So that's the final model. Indeed, it does. This is statistically significant. And we also look at if expressiveness affects growth rate after we control for resource acquisition and it doesn't. And that establishes that uh, exp uh, expressiveness, resource acquisition, is one of the, uh, of the mechanisms through which expressiveness affects company growth rate. So this is in a nutshell what a, a survey paper looks like. There are 
three important tables, always in a, in a survey paper. There is the factor analysis table, which presents evidence of reliability and validity of measurements. Then there's correlation table that you should check always. Do the variables that are supposed to explain something correlate with the variables that, that they should explain. And then there's regression table, like this table 3, which contains the main hypothesis testing.